I V M. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Musafir Stories, India's very own travel podcast, where each week we share the journey of travelers in their own words and relive their experiences with you, our listeners. Hey guys, welcome to the final episode of 2021. We are thankful for your company this year, a year that has had many ups and downs. But stay strong, we'll stick this out together. A big thank you to all our guests who made this possible. And of course, you, our listeners, for your constant support. Thank you, guys. On the finale, we have with us a very distinguished guest, Amrita Gangatharkar, who runs a boutique travel company, Nashik Heritage Trails, that offers immersive experiences in and around Nashik. As a part of this episode, we will not only go on a virtual tour around the old city of Nashik with Amrita, But one lucky listener will also have a chance to win a ticket to one of Amrita's upcoming walks by answering three simple questions linked in the show notes. So if you're in or around Nashik or know someone who's in Nashik, this is a great chance to experience the heritage of the city firsthand. Let's get on with the episode and find out more. If you're a cricket fan, check out Edges and Sledges, India's favorite cricket podcast. The podcast focuses on Indian cricket, the IPL, and has a ton of banter both on and off the field. We talk about the week's biggest cricket stories with current and ex-international cricketers, coaches, or sometimes just between us. And it's hosted by me, DJ. Me, Varun. And me, Ashwin. New episodes release every week. You can catch us on the IVM Podcast's website, app, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Check out the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast. So with that introduction, we'd love to welcome Amrita Gangadharkar, who runs a travel experience company called Nashik Heritage Trails. Amrita, thank you so much for being a part of the Musafa Stories and welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. It's an honor and it's a pleasure to be here and be part of this. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're really, really glad to have you, Amrita. And uh, perhaps the name of your company gave it away a little bit, Nashik Heritage Trails. But uh, overall, the introduction I gave was quite brief and concise. So why don't you speak a little bit more about yourself, Amrita, and uh, Nashik Heritage Trails? How did this start? Yeah, sure. So Mm -hmm. before that, I just just go back and tell you a little about my upbringing. So I uh, was born and brought up a little away in a suburb of Nasik, actually. Uh, it's a road towards the Nasik railway station, which is around eight kilometers away from the main city. So that road that connects the main city to, to the station, it's developed as Nasik Road. But luckily, my grandparents lived uh, in Panchwati. And they lived right in the center of all the, you know, uh, hustle, bustle. And so every weekend, I used to leave the urban Nashik behind and I used to enter the Panchavati and I used to spend my weekends with my grandparents and that is how mm-hmm. I got introduced to the Nashik that I talk about today uh, when I conduct heritage walks in Nashik. In 2016 I decided to finally settle uh, in Nashik. Uh, me and my husband we both wanted to be in a small town a little uh, I, we wanted a little slower pace of life and we decided that we will settle in Nashik. Again, uh, him being a Tamilian, we used to get a lot of uh, family and friends from down south. Uh, they didn't know anything beyond from Bakeshwar and Shirdi. Uh, so I used to take them, I used to convince them, you know, Ek din aur reh lo, one more day, just trust me, I will take you around. And I used to take them to all the temples and all the vadas and the river. Nashik has a lot of wineries also. So a lot of people come here uh, for wine tours. And of course, Nashik has always been a very important pilgrimage. So there is people who come for pilgrimage, there is people who come for wineries, but these two are not connecting. They are not, uh, yeah. they don't know about each other. So I decided to be the uh, the middle person to connect, the, uh, to bridge 
the gap between these two. And that is how I started uh, Nashik Heritage Trails, which was earlier Urban Sarai, but now I call it uh, Nashik Heritage Trails. So that is the story actually of um, yeah. how it started. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. And we'll find out a little bit more about that during our um, conversation further. But uh, for somebody, for, for an outsider who's planning on visiting Nashik, can you also give us a little bit of a, uh, orientation as to where Nashik is and uh, how one gets there? So Nashik uh, is in North Maharashtra, very close to the Gujarat border. It's very close to Madhya Pradesh border. Uh, and it is around 180 kilometers from Bombay. And that has been a very important uh, historically because it mm-hmm. uh, Nashik has always been uh, a marketplace and it has always been on a trade route. So yeah. uh, Nashik has been mentioned uh, a lot in the ancient texts mm-hmm. and it has always been uh, known as a marketplace. And that has also uh, given a very unique kind of uh, face uh, to Nashik. Especially on that uh, historic trade route between uh, Baruch and uh... I understand, right? So it's uh, kind of um, on route and that's why it's also been uh, part visited by a lot of uh, travelers and traders in the past. So yeah. we'll touch upon some of these uh, as well and how it's um, kind of had its impact on the city. Uh, just going back to the point that you called out that even from a historic and religious perspective as well, uh, it does have especially connections to the Ramayan. Uh, there's a lot of connections to the Ramayan and uh, some of the places as well we'll visit today that will show up. Do you want to kind of set, set the stage a little bit for the walk itself? Um, Amrita, that the primary walk, the heritage walk around Panchavati in the area that you do and just give us a little bit of a background about the walk. Yeah, I would love to. Actually, I'm going to take mm-hmm. you on a virtual tour of uh, Panchavati and Old Nashik. So if you're mm-hmm. ready, I'll just take you around my favorite places in Nasik. Yeah, wonderful. So there are three reasons why people come to Nasik and why Nasik is famous um, from a history point of view and mythology mm-hmm. also. One is Ramayan, Nasik's connection with Ramayan. So uh, when Ram, Lakshman and Sita, they were in exile, they came to Dandakaranya. So Dandakaranya was Nasik. So they lived here uh, and a lot of uh, important whatever is ha- whatever happened later, it, ha- it happened in Nasik. Mm-hmm. So that is point number one. So even today, uh, when, whenever you go to Panchwati, you will see all the chalks and all the lanes and uh, everything you see around, there is some connection to Rama and, and all the uh, small lanes and chalks and everything is named after some character. Uh, from Ramayan. So it's in the blood of uh, Nashik Gads and um, if you know a little bit of Ramayan it's very very interesting to roam around the, the lanes of Nashik, uh, especially Panchwati. Second point is uh, whatever rituals we do uh, in Hinduism after death. So all those rituals happen in Nashik at Ramkund. So a lot of people come here whatever they do in Banaras Kashi, similar uh, things happen in Trambakeshwar and Nasik. So that is another reason why people, a lot of people come here. And any any given point of time, whenever you go to Ramkund, uh, you will see people performing last rites and, you know, after death, uh, all the rituals after death. The, uh, the atmosphere is a little uh, gloomy, but mm-hmm. I, I will tell you from personal experience that I really find it very peaceful there even though I'm standing in the middle of a lot of hustle bustle. But we'll come to that point uh, later. And third and very important uh, aspect is uh, Kumbh Mela, which happens Mm -hmm. every 12 years. So when um, the sun enters Singharashi uh, every 12 years, uh, there are some important times where you have to take a bath, take a dip in a particular Mm -hmm. place uh, in Trambakeshwar and in Nasik and some other places around Nasik and that happens uh, every 12 years so this is a very auspicious and very holy uh, year for everybody who believes in that particular event so thousands not thousands actually lakhs of people gather to Nasik every 12 years and Kumbh Mela takes place so I would say that roughly uh, these three reasons are there why Nasik is famous and uh, during this walk in Panchwati in Old Nashik, we not just cover the historical part of the 
of the city but also the mythological uh, the religious the political the sociological mm-hmm. part uh, of all these events as well yeah absolutely looking forward to that and uh, just in terms of where you start off this walk um what what's like a starting point usually for these walks amrita i like to start at kala ram temple kala is black in marathi it's a black ram mm-hmm. because the the statue the murti is uh, in black basalt rock which is very usual sight uh, in deccan in this part of the mm-hmm. country because our uh, soil is made of that so we start at kala ram temple another reason is why there is because there is parking space yeah so very practical mm. <laughs> because a lot of people bring their own car and sure. when you enter the old part of the city it's chaotic you know you can't even walk in straight lines so yeah it's a good point to start so whoever is coming to nasik and want to take a, a walk around the old city i'll tell them you come to kala ram temple park your car there and uh, just start walking so the walk starts at kalaram temple and it is a very important temple uh, historically uh, also uh, it, earlier it was a small temple and you know whatever you see uh, today in nasik even though nasik has been on the world map uh, because of the trade and because of the market place because being on the trade uh, trade route and also because of all the religious reasons whatever you see today uh, is from peshwa era and uh, mm-hmm. the reason is because peshwas uh, spent a lot in nasik they loved nasik they used nasik as a vantage point to go to north because nasik was closer to madhya pradesh it was closer to gujarat of course now there are borders but earlier it was not like that so nasik was very uh, if you have a strong hold in nasik you can control trade uh, you can also control the movement from north to south and um, uh, if you have a strong hold here then it is easy to go beyond this point to go north so peshwas did exactly like that so whatever you see today uh, it is from peshwa era that is also a very particular peshwa era where when peshwai was flourishing it was at its peak people were uh, experiencing good uh, financial health there was stability and people did spend a lot of money and how do you really see money in the economy um when people spend on temples when temples have beautiful carvings because they get uh, carigars from outside of maharashtra they are paid very well so when you see a very ornate temple with beautiful carvings and very you know you have actually spent time energy and money doing that and when will you do yeah. it when there is stability when your stomach is full when there is no threat of any kind of attack then only you spend your money on you know all these things so uh, you'll see that uh, whatever you see today is from around 1740 to 1770 or 1760 um from that or 80 or 90 i will say so kalaram temple was one such where a lot of money was spent actually around 23 lakh rupees uh, at mm-hmm. that point was spent on kalaram temple 23 lakh even today is a lot of money and sure. uh, yeah so if uh, somebody is spending that kind of money in 1780s then you yeah. definitely uh, have a masterpiece so it's a very simple temple uh, it does not have too many carvings or too much on it but it's a very nicely done spacious temple where uh, a lot of social activities happen i remember my grandmother used to tell me her life actually revolved around two important events of the day one is uh, a visit to kalaram temple and second one was a visit to ganga river ganga means dakshin ganga which means godavari so yeah. uh, so when you when the ruler wants to spend on a temple or any religious um, building actually it means you know uh, he, he wants to create you know of course a strong hold but also a place where socialization happens and temples are very important socially and politically also not only just religiously so kalaram temple be- became a center um center of all the activity and um 90 years ago when dr baba saheb ambedkar decided to enter the temple with uh, dalits um because before that they were not allowed to enter temples he chose kalaram temple and 
he enter he entered the temple on 2nd of march um, 1930 and that is also a very important uh, event in the history of kanaram temple so i like to start my work uh, with kanaram from kanaram temple not just of course i was just joking not just because only because the parking space but also because <laughs> you know i like to make it very clear where are, where we are and what we are seeing and why this uh, building is important and historically culturally socially uh, politically how uh, it has shaped uh, the narrative of nashik so that is why we started kanaram temple yeah absolutely it does uh, definitely make sense and uh, yeah, obviously like the name goes the main deity is lord ram right and you also yeah. have uh, um idols of um S- sita and lakshman in the temple uh, and uh, i guess the unique uniqueness of this temple compared to a few others uh, might be that uh, these are all in black stone right and the temple as well as uh, uh, pretty much in um, black stone that, that might uh, be one of the stand out features of the temple absolutely um, actually all of them all of the temples are um, in the black stone because this is a very it's very uh, it's from deccan so yeah. you see a lot of uh, black stone everywhere in nashik yeah yeah definitely and uh, also uh, I, one of the things i forgot to mention at the beginning uh, that i thought i'd check with you even the name uh, nashik itself right it also seems to have a connection to the rama in itself uh, right amrita yeah, yeah. that it's actually um, the episode where uh, lakshman cut off um, Uh, Shurpanaka's nose hmm. or Nashik as uh, I, I guess that's how the name also lies correct uh, that's correct wrong? yeah yeah some academicians uh, believe that it's also because the nine shikharas like Nava Shikhar uh, there hmm. are nine small uh, shikharas like hills um, that form Nashik so sure. uh, some of them believe that maybe it's because of that Nava Shikhar Nashik but uh, mm-hmm. mythologically if you see a lot of people say that uh, shurpanakha's no- nose was chopped off here it's nasik here right. and that's why yeah. it's nasik so that is how it yeah. comes yeah exactly so yeah kind of just going back to the point that you mentioned that uh, uh some really heavy connections to rama and right the epic of rama and yeah. uh cool so thanks so much for uh, calling out uh, the important features of uh, kalaram temple um and from here uh, what's the next point uh, like as you get off uh, what's the next closest point that you make stop at so we meet at the north gate of kalaram temple and we start our mm-hmm. walk from north gate towards ramkund and you have to keep your eyes open uh, mm. uh set because there is there are buildings there there are wadas there are 100 year old uh, buildings everywhere so wherever you look you'll find a gem and some mm-hmm. of them are really in good shape people have maintained them uh, some of them are really really ba- bad shape every time i enter panchwati uh, and old nashik i see one more wada just giving away you know it's either destroyed by the you know the natural forces or people want to construct something new something urban something very very modern yeah. so but uh, when you take this walk from kalaram temple towards ramkund you see a lot of beautiful wadas and very beautiful buildings every lane has uh, is named after um, some character in ramayana so my grandparents they lived in a lane called shabrichi pol means uh mm-hmm. shabri's lane so shabri is also a very important character from uh, ramayan and then you you go ahead and there is a chok called shani chok shani mm-hmm. the the uh, saturn right shani saturn yep. yeah so uh, yeah so uh, that particular square is also very important nashik in nashik we don't celebrate holi like the, we don't play colors um, on holi we celebrate Uh, rang panchmi which is 5 days after holi mm-hmm. we make a big hole in the ground uh, we fill it with water and it's called a rahad okay colored water so rahad is a very specific very special um, uh, uh, holi celebration uh, that happened only in nasik happens only in nasik so there are three rahads in nasik every rahad has its, its own color so this particular rahad is covered with Uh, orange water and then on the ranga panchami people play with that water they jump in it and it's it's a mind blowing kind of experience a lot of foreigners also come to nasik during that time and 
it's a very beautiful uh, celebration and if ever you are going to visit nasik do plan a trip around rangpanchami so uh, why i am telling you all this because when you walk right now uh, you don't really understand how it happens there because it looks like a very normal chowk where people are going and there are cars and there are two wheelers and there are shopkeepers yeah but during rangpanchami everything is cleared they actually dig up whole a big uh, like a well they dig up and uh, the hard is played there so right over there you will find another temple uh, which is gora ram temple because the mm-hmm. it's uh, the the murti is in marble so it's right. a fair ram so it's gora ram a unique uh, thing about this temple is it's it's like a vada it's not a very typical temple that you see otherwise you know with a very typical temple architecture and shikhara and you know very very a uh, very typical temple uh, carvings and all it's a vada it's it's owned by a family called muthe family and mm-hmm. it's a very beautiful setup where people love to visit they have maintained it amazing like it has a, a very old world charm but at the same time they have used modern technology to maintain it so mm-hmm. i always take people there and they love it they just love it the color they love the the piece they love the structure a lot of architecture students actually they visit this particular temple because uh, when they study vada architecture of maharashtra uh, mm-hmm. they use this as an example and it's a beautiful beautiful temple yeah and just to kind of call that out vadas are basically i guess res- residences of uh, this area right the yeah. uh, of the times of the peshwas yes yeah 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 so very unique and you'll find uh, a lot of them um, in maharashtra and especially in and around pune and nashik and uh, the old towns like we call them right that were strongholds of the the marathas and uh, good uh, i mean it's also i guess good to see the contrast between the two right the first spot which was the kala ram and now the gora ram temple yeah. uh, in terms of this one is this a fairly newer compli- uh, compared to kala ram it's a Amrita? 200 around 200 okay. year old yeah It's roughly around the same time as well. Yeah. And what about from here, Amrita? Uh, after having spent some time at the Kuraram Temple, where next do we head off so to? So after this, we enter another temple uh, premises, which is called Kapaleshwar, which is a Shiva temple. So mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it was constructed in 1738. So you'll see all these temples are constructed in you know that particular uh, around 1740 to 17. you know 1890 like i mentioned mm-hmm. before so kapaleshwar is another very beautiful temple my favorite temple actually and uh, okay. it has a dome it doesn't have a shikhara so mm-hmm. it has a dome which is quite similar to a mosque like uh, dome so that is a mm-hmm. very unique feature of this particular temple and i would say that you know a lot of people borrowed uh, styles from whatever they saw around you know a lot of carriers yeah. came from outside because peshwas went up north and also down south they brought a lot of uh, workmen a lot of artisans a lot of carriers with them so in nasik you see a lot of mixed kind of architecture and you know people celebrate that kind of mixed uh, style uh, everywhere you'll see is another feature of kapaleshwar temple which is like uh, there is no nandi there so mm-hmm. uh, all the shiva temples uh, they have to have a nandi uh, outside the shiva temple but this particular kapaleshwar temple does not have a nandi mm. so i would say these two are very unique features uh, of kapaleshwar temple yep. Yeah and it's great actually that you're calling this out because uh, to the naked eye a lot of times some of these nuances they're not as visible right so it's good that we're calling these out during the work and also giving uh, kind of the rationale the back stories of uh, some of these places uh, it's just that much more easier to absorb and remember for people as well um, as well as to learn about these things so thank you so much for calling that out as um uh, amrita for us and it's uh, actually Uh, one of the interesting experiences of such walks as well otherwise if it's just about seeing places right you, like one could go out by themselves and just look at them 
but actually making these little connections and understanding these little nuances that's where uh, going on these walks with experts like yourself that makes sense and uh, where next to from here um, amrita after we've so uh, we are not going anywhere the for, yeah okay. we are not going anywhere for a minute now we are going to just uh-huh. stand here uh, because kapaleshwar is at a height and it's a good point to just stand and absorb the surrounding so when you stand right uh, at the door of kapaleshwar and see beyond like see in the straight line you will see another temple which is sundar narayan temple and mm-hmm. um, and you also see a bridge in 2021 today we are sitting here using technology to talk for us having a bridge is like you don't even think about it you don't even think about not having a bridge and how people used to cross how people used to travel what they used to do so uh, when you walk around this city not having that bridge not being able to cross it doesn't even occur to you but at one point of time people were against having the bridge uh, because they used to feel that this is a holy river and you do not want to step on it and you don't want to cross like that they used to take the boat Hmm. So there still there is the boat gate. It's called the Nau Darwaza, which uh, where boats used to leave. Uh, so people had to actually take efforts to convince them that bridges are good. Bridges are good for you. Uh, it will really ease um, your daily commute, and it's okay. We are not uh, disrespecting the river. We're actually just facilitating our lives. So people agreed. They crowd funded, and the bridge was constructed. and uh, the toll was 4 annas at that point to cross the bridge to use the mm-hmm. bridge and the people used to take their chappals off put them on their head and then they cross it because for them it was like they stepping on the river and uh, it was not allowed so that's the story of the bridge but it doesn't stop over there it was constructed in uh, 1895 i mean the construction was completed in 1895 and a mm-hmm. warranty period was 100 years okay so of course then the british uh, we got freedom and the british left but in uh, 1995 uh, municipal corporation of nasik they received a memo saying okay so the warranty period is over now it's up to you we just we are just informing you so whoever was taking care of uh, all the documentation and all the whatever the records were they did make it a point and they informed the nasik um, local government and now wow. there is another okay. bridge constructed next to it parallelly and now mm-hmm. it's a two way bridge now so that is that is the story of the bridge and yeah <laughs> very interesting yeah. especially the 99 year warranty as well yeah <laughs> something really uh, yeah somebody like took it uh, that's very personal to very serious yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah very interesting and um is this the Ahlia Holkar bridge that you yes, were referring to? Yes, yeah, correct. Oh, okay, yeah. Cool. Okay. So earlier the name was Victoria Bridge named after the Queen Victoria. After mm-hmm. they constructed another bridge, now it's a two-way bridge. It's a bigger bridge now. Now it's called Ahilya Devi Holkar Bridge. Why? Because Ahilya Devi Holkar, uh, who was um, from uh, Madhya Pradesh, uh, she yeah. uh, spent a lot of uh, time in Nasik and she constructed a lot of ghats and temples and Uh, a lot of you know old trees were planted by her actually a lot of 200 or uh, 300 year old trees there are in nasik mm. banyan trees and many beautiful trees are planted by her so ahilya devi holkar is a very big name very revered name in nasik definitely and um just like taking a step back this overall neighborhood is what is referred to as uh, panchwati panchwati um, yes Panchwati, right, Amrita? And, yeah. Uh, even that, uh, I don't know if you'd like to touch upon that, uh, the, the significance of the name itself, right? Uh, how it's come about to be called as Panchwati, uh, if you'd like to call those out. My mm-hmm. mythologically, five uh, Rishi Kumars, uh, they are symbolized in those five banyan trees, and Panchwati mm-hmm. means five uh, banyan trees. So that is how right. this name came about. So in this particular area, there were five. banyan trees right now they are not five i think there are two or three only but that is right. how this area is called uh, it's named uh, after the five banyan trees and that's why panchwati yeah yeah, yeah. exactly so that's also pretty important and uh, uh, where about from here uh, so i'm assuming you do head down to the ghat uh, yeah. after kapaleshwar so now <clears throat> okay. uh, we can go down uh, to ramkund 
and uh, mm-hmm. ramkunda there are three kundas kunda means the river is flowing and you know there is a small place where you can go in get inside the water you can pray and perform a lot of you know different rites you know, that area is called ramkunda there is there are two more kundas lakshman kund and sita kund mm-hmm. so when you enter this area uh, you ha- you you see a lot of people sitting there performing last rites performing uh, all the rituals that happen after the death of the near india one and uh, uh, a lot of people are, are there it's very crowded uh, it's noisy but at the same time i do feel a lot of peace there you know like as if uh, and a lot of people do not understand the meaning of why we all like people of all religions they perform certain rites after mm-hmm. the near and dear is dead uh, is dead um, mm-hmm. and a lot of people don't know why we are doing uh, something like this and i always i have found answer for myself uh, after visiting this place again and again and again that mm. you know you, when you actually physically perform something you can move on and mm-hmm. you know all these rites actually kind of um, sum up your feelings for that person you make sure mm-hmm. that he or she is fed well uh, you promise them that i will take care of whoever is left behind you i will take care of everything i have done everything for you and now you can be free you know you can just go and you you are well taken care of wherever you go and this kind of feeling you get when you go there and uh, one of my favorite places to visit actually uh, in nasik uh, Nash- uh, Godavari is not a, a perennial uh, river. It depends on monsoon. Uh, so uh, there is no not water always in Ramkund. Sometimes the water level is very low. Uh, but when there is water, when there is enough water in the river, it's beautiful. It's the most amazing visual uh, one can mm. see. Yeah. So anybody who is visit- visiting Nasik, I would definitely I would recommend them to visit Ramkund. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and uh, yeah, like to your point, right? Even though there is, like I'm saying, so many people around and chaos in terms of um, people being around, still it gives you that kind of sense of peace, and uh, I'm sure it is related to that sense of um, closure one gets, right? Like yeah. uh, detaching yourselves with those final rites that are performed by people for their near and dear ones. Um, uh, but at this point, right? We've uh, now at this point we are at the Ram Kund. Uh, is this roughly what halfway through the walk or uh, how, how yeah, far we are come? now exactly at half halfway when we enter naru shankar uh, temple okay let's take a quick commercial break here and we'll be right back on the other side eventually you see the end of your childhood get accustomed to womanhood enjoy the experience of sisterhood might get to wifehood or not choose motherhood or not You learn to define your personhood, earn a livelihood, change the neighborhood, and get rid of the falsehood that life post academia is easy. So join me, Ritasha, and me, Ayushi, on a journey from station starting point to station um what now? Next station, Pudin station, and hopefully Agla station, adulthood. Fresh episodes out every Thursday. Right, we are back talking to Amrita about Nashik and its rich history. Um, Amrita, you were telling us about the Naroshanka Temple before we went into a break. Tell us a little bit more about this place and its significance. So this temple uh, was constructed in seventeen forty. Another hmm. uh, uh, officer of Peshwa, he uh, constructed this, and it's like in like the, uh, in today's times, like MPs and. Uh, corporate uh, corporators they get money they get funding they 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 have to spend it so similarly a lot of officers of peshwas also spent a lot of money constructing uh, all public utilities and uh, temples and uh, this one was constructed by naru shankar um, raje bahadur a very big mm-hmm. family uh, in nasik at that point time and very interesting thing about uh, this temple is there is a bell um, and mm-hmm. that bell was actually awarded to naru shankar because he for his bravery he displayed uh, when there was a battle of peshwas with uh, the portuguese on the west coast yeah. of maharashtra 
So Chimaji mm-hmm. Appa, who was the brother of Baji Rao, the Baji Rao of the Masani, uh, Masani's mm-hmm. Baji Rao, yeah, just to <laughs> make it simple yeah. to understand. So <laughs> Baji Rao was a very revered figure in Maharashtra, and uh, he was the one who, you know, took the Maratha uh, rule uh, up north, and um, his brother was ba- uh, Chimaji Appa, who took care of the west front uh, of the Maratha Empire. Baji Rao mm-hmm. took care of the north front. So when Chimaji Appa uh, took the Vasai fort, uh, you know, what they did was j- to take something back. Uh, they yep. took the bells uh, of the churches and one and all these bells were rewarded to people who, the officers who performed really well and um, for, the, for the bravery actually. So one mm-hmm. such bell was uh, awarded to Mr. Naru Shankar, uh, Rajiv Bahadur, and he put it up uh, in the temple, Naru Shankar Shiva temple. And the bell was there for many years. Even today, it's there. It's right now. It's properly secured. Earlier, it was just uh, uh, openly available for anybody to touch. People used mm. to take advantage of it, and uh, so now it's properly secured uh, over there. But you can still see it. So. That is actually the halfway of our walk now, and mm-hmm. at this point, I take some time actually just to relax, sit in this temple. Mm-hmm. I love this sure. temple, and it's very peaceful. It's actually not very crowded like other temples. Okay. Um, it's not visited by everybody. People don't even uh, like know that there is a temple here. If you come from the roadside, if you come from the riverside, yes, you can't miss it. It's a huge structure. But when you're just walking down the road, you don't you don't really realize that there's a beautiful temple right here behind all the shops. So uh, we go there, we take a little uh, break there, just try to soak in whatever we have seen. And because after this point, Panchwati part is over, we cross over and we go to the old Nashik part. So mm-hmm. this is a good time to take a break also. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And a uh, very interesting story about um, the bell as well, right? The Naroshankar bell and it's uh, the Battle of Basin or Vasai, mm. like like you mentioned, right? That's that's when this is from and spoils of war, like we say, right? Yeah, that's how uh, yeah, I believe they've brought this back. And I don't know, like uh, uh, this is something I'd read that the bell is pretty loud as well. Uh, uh, like you said, it's secured now, but yeah. in the past, like you could hear it like far and out. Uh, and apparently, like if somebody speaks in a very high-pitched tone, <laughs> you usually call them that as uh, yeah, no, Naroshan Karachi. Karachi yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're like you're a loud yeah. mouth. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's just funny uh, while I was looking this up. Uh, but interesting and a uh, good point to catch quick breath as well because we've been, we've been walking around and roughly in terms of uh, uh, I know in terms of hours you said it's two and a half to three hours depending on um, how much time we spend uh, at places but uh, in terms of distance how much would this be uh, is this still close uh-huh. in uh, in terms of distance we haven't really covered much like yeah. we are it's still in the same area and yeah. uh, it's hardly a, a short walk like a 10 minute walk yeah. But yeah. because there is so much to see, and any lane you enter, you'll find a gem. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, and moving on from here, from the Naroshankar Temple, uh, is is now the old town, old uh, town part of yeah, Nashik that we're entering. Okay. Now we are crossing the river, and mm-hmm. now we are going to the other side of the uh, river, uh, which is called Old Nashik, Zuna Nashik, we call. It. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is a very important uh, place to visit. Because uh, all the traders, all the people uh, who came and settled in Nasik, uh, they, they all settled in this area. And all the who's who of Nasik, all the officers of Peshwas, and uh, they constructed their beautiful wadas along the river. I call it Marine Drive of Nasik because it, <laughs> it's, it's right on the river side. Beautiful wadas, beautiful buildings, and they really spend a lot of time and money. Uh, making these houses so um, I, I actually like to take a little break here on the bridge and the bridge that we take it called Ram Setu so again the bridge is also mm-hmm. named after uh, Ram so this yeah. is a small bridge not as big as uh, the other one that we spoke about it's a small bridge which is called Ram Setu Setu is bridge 
in yep. uh, Sanskrit. So it's Ram Setu, and we we take this bridge, we go on the other side, and then we enter the the markets of Nasik. So we enter the Bhandi Bazaar, which is a vessel market. Then we enter the Kapad Kapad Pet. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, Pet is a market, so the cloth market. Then we enter a, a very very old Saraf Bazaar, which is jewelry market, uh, which is more than hundred years old. Then you know all these people they came from outside. A lot of people came from Gujarat. Uh, they settled in Nasik and they flourished because Nasik is, it it still is actually on the Bombay Agra Road, which is uh, a trade route. And like you said, mm-hmm. it connected the the central part also. It also Nasik was part of Khandesh. and mm-hmm. khandesh was a very important uh, place uh, in the history of india because it's right in the center mm-hmm. and a trade route connected burhanpur and surat so that a uh, very important trade route passed through uh, uh, khandesh and that is why right. this area became very important a lot of gujarati marwadi traders came and settled in this area and they brought their culture their food uh, their, their their craft with them so when you enter this area it's like a it's like a mixture it's like a melting pot of cultures uh, every lane is named after one community there is tambat lane there is bohor bohri patti where bohri muslims live and they have their shops so uh, you know it's it's a very different kind of world altogether and the texture is different the the sounds are different because it was a vessel market it i mean it still is a vessel market you have a lot of sounds of people mm-hmm. working on the vessels and there was this very typical sound uh, that used to be there in the past where we used to use a lot of copper and brass vessels now of course we use steel uh, yeah. but uh, that beating sound used to be there so uh, you take this amazing road through all these markets people spend a lot of time in these markets and when i tell them that you know let's go shopping i'll take you to a nice uh, market area they say no no we don't want to shop but ultimately they spend hours in this area and i have to literally tell them that you know i will go home you can spend a uh, time here there is there are beautiful antique shops there so people spend a lot of time buying antiques and i'll tell you very interesting uh, story of a danish uh, school a uh, college mm-hmm. boy so i mm-hmm. one of my first walks was um, i hosted uh, 30 danish students who had come to visit india as ex- mm-hmm. exchange students okay so uh, i don't know why they decided to come to nasik because their teacher told told me uh, the the indian teacher who was taking care of them he said mm-hmm. that we go to pune we don't come to nasik so i said okay like in the beginning of the walk he was like very he was not very happy with this change of plan i think he he mm-hmm. didn't even know what to see in nasik he didn't even know whether there was something uh, to see in nasik so he was like okay whatever i mean we generally go to pune but this time we came to nasik so show us so then we finished the walk we went around and again i told told him the same thing uh, that let, let me take you to the uh, market vessel market and antique market the the students and the teacher they were like no no we don't want to buy anything we'll buy everything from bombay we don't want to go but fortunately or unfortunately the road that we were going to take to go back to their bus it went through the market so okay. they had to and they they went crazy they went to each and every shop and <laughs> you i will you will not believe me what they bought so this boy who went in a vessel shop and he bought these steel pani peene ke hote hain na the you drink water from these uh, small uh, steel uh, you know glasses mm-hmm. so you get six ka set generally we right. had yeah he bought that and mm-hmm. he was thrilled you know he was like oh my god i never seen such beautiful steel uh, vessels and he just went crazy and he i we asked him so who did you buy it for he said i bought it for my mother at the end of this walk this particular teacher who earlier was not very happy with the change mm-hmm. of plan and he was not very happy with he, he came to nasik he was thrilled he was beyond thrilled and he was like yeah this was a good idea next year onwards we will definitely make sure that we'll come to nasik and of course <laughs> uh, he said that we will keep one extra hour to just you know roam around the market and uh, he was really happy 
so yeah. that is what the markets are about so when you uh, go a little deeper in the market you'll come across a very beautiful building huge building mm. right in the center of all the hustle and bustle uh, which is called called sarkar wada so <laughs> the sarkar wada is another uh, 18th century uh, building which was constructed by peshwas it was peshwas administrative office so okay. uh, was a very important uh, building at that point later on um, you know there was a no uh, a small note that some wedding also happened there so it was like a destination wedding kind of maybe no. <laughs> situation back then <laughs> um then um after independence uh, not independence after the british took over peshwai means peshwa mm-hmm. rule in 1880s it became british administrative office it became a prison for some time for the british mm-hmm. um after independence for a little period of time there was a library the public library inside it then uh, it became a police chowki so it was a police station not of one there were two police chowkis uh, in this beautiful building and i think this good sense prevailed after a point and in the 90s people just woke up to this beautiful structure and they they realized that oh my god we need to preserve this uh you know thankfully because it was a police chowki not much damage was done like normal public was not uh, mm-hmm. there was not much access to that and of course police also they didn't uh, damage the building much so uh, fortunately it, it's intact uh, some yeah. floors are gone uh, but otherwise the structure is uh, it's still visible and yeah. uh, uh, now it is state archaeological survey of india office and they have converted that space into a museum also so whatever mm-hmm. ruins and antiques whatever uh, they have found in this region region means nasik dhule and jalgaon mm-hmm. district and nandurbar so this region whatever they have found uh, all the antique pieces and murtis and uh, coins they have preserved uh, in this museum a lot of people yeah. from nasik actually don't know about this museum so mm-hmm. if you are in nasik yeah. do visit this museum the entry ticket for indian person is 10 rupees it's nothing and yeah. it's beautiful it's the most amazing structure you'll see in nasik uh, yeah. so i recommend wholeheartedly and i make sure that i take each and every person uh, to this museum whether you're interested in a museum visit or not just go there just experience the the building i make sure yeah definitely and uh, like you said very unique also right uh, just the architecture within the building as well with all these uh, wooden columns and beams etc yeah uh, it's it's very unique that we also very typical of those um, wadas and the architecture from those times yeah hmm. yeah so very interesting place and it's called as the sarkar wada sarkar wada uh, yeah. sarkar is uh, the government i yeah, guess yeah the government yeah sarkar yeah. wada so so you know that, after yeah. this point mm-hmm. you know we spend a lot of time in the lanes where um, all the lanes are uh, laden with beautiful wadas of you know all these jewelers and uh, traders uh, so whichever lane you enter you'll find something you find a beautiful mm-hmm. wada waiting for you uh, so we spend a lot of time just roaming in these lanes and there are some mm-hmm. uh, families i know them personally so they mm-hmm. open their doors for their own uh, their own homes and they take us inside they show us uh, whatever they have preserved a lot of people have beautiful vessels beautiful centuries old uh, pothis the scriptures and a lot of documentation that they have preserved just to give you an example uh, there is one wada where you find all the old documentation of the wada like how, when it was constructed how much a uh, material was used where it was sourced from how much money was mm. paid to the labor and uh, that person is also col- he collects old uh, documents so th- he has one document which is written in uh, gold ink like actual gold ink mm. so uh, you know you say that his name was written in golden letters in the history in the pages mm. of history it's not just to say it actually right. used to happen in the past where people used to actually yeah. write something in gold ink because they wanted it to last for centuries for thousands of years and 
and of course the event was so important that they thought it was necessary to be documented in in that thing so uh, you know i can spend like hours even uh, just talking about this area and just roaming around <laughs> in this area because each lane has some uh, building which is very important and uh, all all these trading communities they have like these pockets where you will find a particular uh, community their own dt a small temple you know mm-hmm. a very unique kind of uh, 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 architecture so uh, we spend like a good one or one and a half hour there just meeting people seeing their houses seeing mm-hmm. how they live and uh, and then the walk ends at uh, one of the eateries uh, in old nashik so yeah, i was actually going to ask you yeah. i know it's not too much uh, in terms of walking but <laughs> definitely uh, that's a crucial component uh, important component of the whole um, surrounding and the experience also right so yeah tell us a little bit more about that too so a uh, food wise i always make sure that the walks are uh, they they end on a very sweet uh, note or of course mm. if you want savory savory note so right. old part also has some old eateries they are famous for many many years for a very specific kind of food and more than that you know they haven't changed their look of course earlier they maybe they were using chulas and now they use gas and stuff mm-hmm. but the essence remains the same so we take some time to be there there are there are three options actually i gave people three options one is uh, to eat jalebi and papda uh, in budha and and dhokla so mm-hmm. because nashik is very close to gujarat and a lot of gujaratis are in uh, nashik a lot of food uh, is influenced by uh, gujarat so you get mm-hmm. beautiful jalebis and papdas and uh, dhoklas here in old part so that is one option second option is sabudana vada which is a little different like uh, i actually i didn't know that it's different and it's not available in other parts of the world uh, because i grew up eating sabudana vada so i had absolutely no clue that there could be people who didn't know what sabudana is but i have met such people who have no clue <laughs> so that is another option that is uh, it's called sayantara the name of the place is sayantara Uh, okay. it's right at the heart of uh, bhadrakali area which is uh, a market place a uh, very old market place and um, then the third option is misal so misal is very famous in nashik yeah. yeah so it's, it's like a mixture of a lot of spicy things and uh, sprouts and uh, farsan and uh, and topped with uh, a lot of peanuts and onion and uh, then you pour very hot and spicy curry on it and you eat it with pav so that is how this is the first time i explained what misal is actually <laughs> <laughs> because you know yeah. generally you eat it so you know but yeah. uh, because it's a virtual walk i have to explain sure. <laughs> i hope uh-huh. i have painted a nice picture <laughs> of misal yeah yeah definitely mouth watering <laughs> yeah <laughs> But yeah, until uh, until you visit, definitely this description does make a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope you come back just to eat misal. I mean, <laughs> oh, if yeah. not, if not temple or vadas, just for misal, I think anybody who's listening, I think it's a worth <laughs> a visit, and um, you should definitely come for food. A lot of options, and like you said, a lot of them are uh, old, authentic places as well. So it's always good to. uh kind of check those out to through these works yeah. um uh, any any other points of interest i know uh, from at least from a heritage perspective we called out a lot of these important places uh but just in terms of other types of works that um are covered by you and the company in ashok heritage trails um amrita would you like to call out a few of them actually there are many nashik is full mm. of uh, all these places and uh, you know if you take a little Now, like thirty, forty kilometers radius uh, mm-hmm. uh, around Nashik, there are a lot of beautiful temples and very beautiful uh, places to visit. Uh, Nashik, uh, there are many forts in Nashik actually, uh, mm-hmm. forts of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj and even before him. And uh, uh, there is the tallest uh, shikhar in Maharashtra, Kalsubai, that is in Nashik district. 
Mm-hmm. And um, of course, how can I not talk about uh, the wineries? I think that yeah. has become a heritage of Nasik now. Even though the wine story in India started in the nineties uh, with Sula, mm-hmm. I would say that for Nasik, it's it has now it has a GI tag also Nasik Valley wine. So yeah. uh, it's a very it's a story close to our heart uh, for any Nasikar. If you ask, uh, a, a a visit to a winery is a must. <laughs> so uh, we conduct many other uh, walks in Trambakeshwar, in Anjaneri, uh, in Sinnar, uh, in Sandwad. But I would, I always tell people that you you take that walk and combine it with a winery, and your day is made. And yeah. that is how you experience Nashik actually, with little yeah. bit from the past, little bit from uh, today's times. And yeah. I think that is the essence of um, Nashik. Yeah, no, absolutely. The wine capital of India, right? Not uh, not without a reason. Yeah. Um, but thank you for uh, beautifully calling out all of these places. And uh, yeah, definitely make sure to check out um, the other walk options as well. And uh, what better way than to do it with a local, than to do it with, with an expert. So you, so you not just see th- these places and interesting things, but you also learn about them and their backstories and their history. So thank you so much um, for taking us on this wonderful virtual walk, Amrita. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for giving so much time. And thank you so much for doing what you're doing because I think somebody has to talk about the small towns of India. And I'm hoping that you come back, come down to Nasik and I get to take you for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I cannot miss out on that. And uh, it's already on my plan. It's already on my agenda. But yeah, even before that, we'll try and uh, make sure at least one of our listeners can get to experience this in person with you as well. And uh, thank you for all the great work you're doing, Amrita. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. That was yet another great episode on the Masafra Stories. Make sure to show us some love by sharing the podcast with your friends and family. We are on Instagram and Twitter at Musafir Stories. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or the website. Follow us on our social media. We are at IVM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. Hey, it's been another great week on the IVM podcast network. On The Wire Talks, it's all about the Beatles. Oliver Kraske, author and freelance editor who has closely worked with the famous band in the past, tells Siddharth why they're so loved even today. On All Things Policy, the folks at the Takshila Institute discuss Russia's motives, why it's insecure with the G2, and the logic behind its growing alliance with China. On Pesa Vesa, Anupam is joined by Nikhil Agarwal. He is the co-founder and CEO of Grip Invest, and they discuss the working of lease and inventory finance in India. The Simplified Gang speaks to author Suman Srivastava about her new book, Don't Beg, Inspire. And on the Filter Coffee podcast, Surya Swapna, founder of Kathawani, talks to Karthik about mythological storytelling for children. Do follow us on social media. We're IBM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. Go check out our YouTube channels. We go live on a whole bunch of different things. We have a number of different channels. You can find them on ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week. Cred, Bank of Baroda, CoinSwitch Kuber, Intel, and Oxfam India. Thank you for making this possible. Remember the days when our granny used to narrate once upon a time stories? Let's bring back the good old days of moral stories with Storytime Tamil. Hi, I am Ravishankar Balachandran, host of Storytime Tamil podcast. I would like you to entertain and educate your children with stories from Storytime Tamil. Tune in to the new episode sharp at 7 p.m. every day on IVM website, IVM podcast app, YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcast from.